population specifically are we looking at challenging us? Well, right now the attacks are coming from different directions and they're, they're all being coordinated in a very, uh, very substantial way by NCOSI and in a lesser way by Exodus Cry. These are groups, these are religious groups that, that got a big injection of capital uh, through their actions against Pornhub and MindGeek over the last two years. Their, their financials just just blew up. Mm -hmm. And so, and they have a very strong, particularly NCOSA, very strong legal arms that are like trying to place lawsuits at different venues so that it can go up the appeals ladder and eventually get to the Supreme Court and get some decisions. But what you have right now is uh, the, the attacks have not been there there hasn't been any attempt in the law to revive widespread obscenity prosecutions mm -hmm. however there was just a conviction somebody uh, pleaded guilty on fosta sesta for trying to run a knockoff of backpage.com and it, it is a fosta sesta uh, um, conviction so it's the first high profile one uh, so that one could open the door to some of the obscenity stuff. I mean, as you know, and we've, we've spoken about this in the past, reviving obscenity prosecutions is perhaps the, the biggest danger. And it's probably the longest shot for them. Although that's what J.D. Vance and Josh Howley and people like that have been, have been saying. Uh, Rick Scott from Florida to a lot of people in the Republican uh, uh, ecosystem are, are pushing for reviving obscenity prosecutions. Um, the other ways to come after pornography, uh, particularly online, have to do with um, trying to sue or create liability for platforms uh, when they're hosting sexual material. Are we talking about Section 230 right now? And that section, they can, the platforms can appeal to Section 230, which says that they're not liable for things other people upload. But there are several cases that are going through right now uh, through the courts that could have an impact if some of the courts decide that indeed they have liability for this. And th these have to do with things where uh, people were either minors or coerced and their videos were uploaded by third parties online and then they ended up on one of the platforms. And so NCOSI is pushing a lot of these lawsuits just to get one judge to agree that the platforms are indeed liable for this. Uh, in that case, if liability starts creeping up on the platforms, they might make the decision Twitter and Reddit, which were the two that were allowing sexual content openly, mm -hmm. uh, they might push for uh, banning all sexual content, which is the approach that Apple and Facebook took very early on which then translated to Instagram when Facebook bought Instagram. Uh, it's called the, 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 female, the female nipple bar, right? Mm -hmm. Anything above a f one female ni nipple. Female appearing nipple, I don't know. They use some kind of weird phrase. But yeah, anything from the nipples beyond is you can't have it on the platform. But isn't that kind of untrue? Because we've seen so many samples of other mainstream companies or even companies like Playboy uploading stuff where you can clearly see a female nipple and they're not, they don't have their content taken down. Whereas sex workers would do much less and they definitely have their content taken down. Is that because the idea is that, oh, well, this is art versus pornography. Is that the distinction that the platforms make? No, I don't think that's a distinction that this, they make. Uh, outright nipples are extremely rare. I've seen maybe one of a couple of celebrities or like maybe they post a magazine cover from Europe. Uh, very, very, very rarely you see a female nipple there. The general blur them. Uh, but yes, you see. And, and there is definitely a double standard where those things are not removed and things that sex workers post are removed. Uh, I don't think that they're making any, uh, first of all, they won't comment on that. Facebook, Meta, uh, Instagram, they will never comment on that, uh, even though they've been challenged explicitly and, and they haven't. Um, it probably has to do with something that is 
become very obvious, which is that companies that have a, a relationship with Meta and Playboy have a different channel to handle things mm -hmm. uh, than sex workers and other users who don't have that channel. So probably what is happening is that the sex workers are getting, you know, either moralistic people or trolls or malicious people just, uh, you know, telling on them through the system. They're like reporting those those pictures and then it goes through the regular channel. But if you try to do that on Playboy or a celebrity or, or anything like that, then within Meta, it doesn't go through the same channel. It probably goes through a channel where it's handled by people who handle their accounts. Right, right, okay. And therefore, they probably are like, oh, well, it's just this person's butt. We'll, we'll let it slide. Right. 